Welcome to HRD Live. I'm joined here with Josh Parson, industry analyst. Um, how are you today, Josh? Great, great. Good to have you here. Um, so, Josh, what strikes you as the biggest trends emerging in HR right now? Well, I think there's two really enormous trends. Uh, one is the way the economy has changed and all of the jobs that we built job descriptions for and, and um, assessments and pay and all the structure around are changing very, very quickly because of technology. So companies are going through this process of, in the sense, redesigning what people do at work and then reassessing who the right people are for those jobs and how much should we be paying people for those jobs. It's very, very dynamic. So, so um, anybody who takes a job today, six, nine months from now, that job changes. And then the second piece that I think is really important is data. We finally have enough HR technology that HR professionals and HR leaders can, can get access to massive amounts of data about their workforce. And they really don't know how to use all that data yet. So there's a lot of work going on the technology side of HR, pay transparency, better understanding people's roles and skills and learning and really learning how to use all that data. And AI is a big part of that. And um, I believe tomorrow you're leading the discussion of the Chief HR Officer panel. Right. Um, do you, what do you anticipate will be, will be discussed? Well, I know a lot of these HR leaders and, and you know they all have quite a few things on their minds. The first is most companies are going through some stage of a digital transformation. So they're transferring their whole business model to be more digital. Agile is a big topic in HR. How do we do things more quickly and more experimentally in HR? Uh, diversity, inclusion, uh, pay transparency are big topics in HR right now. Uh, globalization and, and localization at the same time. Most of the bigger companies here are finding that they need to localize their HR practices in Asia in particular where the economy is growing very, very fast, so that's a big topic. Uh, leadership models are constantly in debate, and so there's always talk about that. Um, and then I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about technology and what do we do about all these tools uh, and what's going on with all the HR platforms, so I'm sure those will all be important topics. So you've mentioned before in the past about um, the convenience of our own lifestyles and how workplace needs to catch up with that type of convenience. How do you think this could happen? Well, the thing, the the, uh, the, the research that I've done lately that really kind of um, seems very, very relevant right now is this idea of the alternative workforce. There used to be this idea that there were full-time workers and then there was everybody else. And if you weren't a full-time worker, you were called an alternative worker. You were a gig worker, you were a part-time worker, you were a contractor, you know, maybe you were a, a mother who went home to take care of your children and came back part-time. That's actually everybody. Everybody is part of the alternative workforce. So we all work on weekends, we work in coffee shops, we work part-time. 65% uh, of millennials and Generation Z workers have side hustles. They actually do, uh, you know, they have a full-time job and they have a part-time job. So, um, so I think companies are beginning to realize that they have to treat every employee like they're an alternative worker and constantly recruit them and attract them into the company so that they stay committed to the organization because there's so many jobs. We've had 11, or actually 12 years of economic growth now that in most parts of the world, uh, there are more jobs than there are people, even though there's a lot of disruption in jobs. So, um, so I think that's the biggest theme, is um, what I like to call the untethering between the employee and the employer. You know, in a world where you don't really own your employees anymore, how do you manage them to keep them engaged and trained and, and productive at work? And do you think that HR do you think there's something that HR is lacking when it comes to adding value to the CEO? Is there something that they're completely and utterly overlooking? And, and if so, how, how do they address that? Well, I think HR people do a lot of things great. So uh, before I get into any criticisms of HR, um, but I do think, and I know this, because this is something I'm working on, that most HR professionals um, struggle to keep up with all of the things that are changing in their world. The profession of HR, and I like to, really the way I like to think about it is HR is more like a craft 
than a profession. You can't go to school, read a book, and learn how to do HR. Because there's too many things to do and it's always changing. So I think the biggest issue um, is continuing to reskill and upskill HR professionals, learning about AI, learning how to analyze data, learning about transparency, learning about all the changes in the workforce and the work styles that people have, new tools, new technology. Um, all of those are things that um, are changing every year or two. So I think that's the biggest issue is keeping up to date. Um, and then the second thing that I hear constantly, and, and I don't think this will ever change, is what people typically call business acumen. It's easy to go into HR, because it isn't easy, but you can go into HR if you like people, and maybe you're a training person, or you're a recruiter, or you're a generalist, but until you really understand the business that your company is in, in great detail, you really can't become a strategic HR leader. So, a lot of HR people didn't go to business school, they didn't study accounting, uh, they didn't study economics, um, some of those things that I learned later in my life now I think are critically important for HR professionals. So I would encourage HR people to spend a little time learning sort of the basics of business and it'll pay off. And I know that you've mentioned before about um, the structure of payments and how that needs to completely reform and that model needs to change. Could you go into a bit more depth about that? Yeah, the funny thing about you know pay is one of the biggest parts of HR and business in general. I mean, most companies, 50, 60, 70% of their expenses payroll. But if you ask uh, HR and business leaders how well aligned their pay practices are to their business strategy, and the last question we just did this, and I did this as part of my work with Deloitte, only 7% of companies believe that their pay practices are fully aligned to their business strategy. So you gotta scratch your head and think, how could that be? It makes no sense, and the reason is um, we have probably dozens and dozens and really hundreds of years of experience paying people in traditional pay models where you every year you get a 3% raise and then you get compared to other people at your job title and if they get their if they get a raise then you get a performance appraisal all of that is institutionalized into jobs that are changing and so you know in San Francisco for example where I live there are people getting out of college that might study machine learning or AI, they're making $200,000 right out of school. And you look at that compared to the pay, pay, you know, the salaries of people making inside the company and you're like, well, how do we do that? We, how do we make that adjustment? It doesn't work. So we have to pay people in a much more agile way, in a much more personalized way. So I think that's gonna be a big theme for the next few years, especially if we go through a little economic you know, downturn. I think people really look hard at pay. Well, I mean, financial well-being is such a huge area, and um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly talking to different people about it, yeah. and I, I feel like the two are one. You know, that right. will make a big difference. Well, in fact, that's one of the things that I've, you know, really discovered the last couple of years is, you know, even though we have uh, economic growth, we haven't had wage growth in most countries. Most people don't feel that they're keeping up with inflation. Their salaries have not kept up, and employers are afraid to raise wages because there's this fear that if you raise wages, you'll never be able to you know, cut them if you have a downturn. And I think we're reaching a point in the economy where um, most of the jobs are becoming human value add jobs. And so you have to pay people more. And I don't think we've come to grips with that in the comp and benefit parts of corporations that it's okay to pay people higher wages. In the United States, there's a, I, I think it's probably true here, there's a huge debate about the minimum wage, what the minimum wage should be, and whether each state should adopt the minimum wage, and I just don't think we're paying people enough, to be honest, for, for the value they're providing to their organizations. And um, now you've been quoted saying that you think that HR is doing the most important work um, for now, um, <laughs> the, the most important work that you've seen in the last 20 years. Um, so what, what, what is that? Can you, can you specify exactly what that work is? Well, um, you know, I've only been in HR 20 years, so prior to that I can't speak right. to it. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 think the, the big, I think the big value that HR can provide is creative solutions in an agile way. 
when I got involved in HR, you know, 15, 20 years ago, there were a lot of established ways of doing things. And so what most HR people would do is they would read a book, they would hire a consultant, they would, you know, they would build a template, and then they would develop some kind of an HR program and they would roll it out. And there was a lot of focus on um, training people and, you know, change management. So if you look at something like onboarding or performance management or uh, career development or whatever, there was a program for that. Um, today, you have to do that much more in, ex in an experimental way. Things are changing so fast. Um, you can't design a program. You can't spend a year designing it because by the time you designed it, what you needed to do changed. So you need to do things in an experimental way and go right into the business and work directly with the line leaders and iterate in a uh, agile way. And that approach to solving problems is not what most HR people did 20 years ago. So the more uh, effective HR organizations today are much more uh, oriented towards technology. They understand what the role of technology is. They can build apps. They understand how to analyze data. They can do iterative design. Uh, they work in small, multifunctional teams. You know, the other thing that's changed is the idea of HR operating in silos, like we have a recruiting department, we have a training department, we have a compensation department, we have a benefits department, we have a, uh, you know, maybe we have a change. Those all have to come together. Because most of the problems that happen in organizations are some element of all of those. So the HR function has to operate in a much more agile way, and those are, um, ideas that have just started to take, take hold the last year or two uh, to break down some of the silos inside of HR. So those are some of the big changes I think are going to be important. Um, thank you so much for your time today. It's been fantastic. Thank and you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your, your day. Great. Thank you. Thank you.